hello friends welcome to my shop where I share some great ideas uh, this fall I've been working on Christmas ornaments it's almost Christmas so I wish you all a Merry Christmas but uh, in my experimenting doing these ornaments I come up with some what I figure great ideas which I'm going to show you and you might be able to find it very useful uh, first the ornaments that I worked on because I was interested of course was inside outside but uh, this is not what I'm going to show you today. It's actually doing the more simple ones, the, uh, the globe type here. And I'll show you what the problem is if you go to make one of these and how to solve it. So there's those that I've dyed and then I did experiment with, with one of these here. But uh, the problem is uh, I watched an online uh, demonstration by uh, Cade Bolger. He does some excellent online uh, demonstrations that you can subscribe to and uh, advise you to go to his website. To look him up on the internet. Uh, he's got some good ones coming up this uh, in the new year here. So he did them on a pen mandrel, a special type and uh, I looked up the price on that and it would be $50 and uh, I kind of like to do stuff on my own as you found out build things and that so I thought well why not just uh, take a, a, a piece of wood and uh, lay it round and and you could do a number of them on there which I did which was four of them and uh, here's one of them right here that I did on that mandrel and uh, then I went to uh, uh, finish them off and drill a hole in the, in the bottom for your finials. And you're drilling into end grain. And it's very difficult to uh, get that uh, hole right in the center. And I could certainly see that's a good idea to have a mandrel where it's already and then it's lathed to that center. And I thought, well, how on earth could I do that? I didn't want to, I didn't have time to buy one and I didn't really want to because that type of mandrel wouldn't fit on my lathe because it's homemade and I don't have a number two Morris taper in the headstock. Uh, so I uh, come up with an alternate thing and that's actually the main reason that I'm going to be showing you uh, how to build that mandrel and how to use it. So, uh, very simply, uh, a friend of mine dropped off a, a bunch of pieces of ready rod and I thought, hey, I'll make one out of a ready rod. So all you need is a piece of ready rod. They're available and I had, these were 3 eighths and, and I think the 3 eighths are, are very good because uh, then it stays stiff and straight. Now, Cade mentioned on some of the mandrels they've got a very small mandrel of course and if you put too much pressure on the end it'll actually cause the mandrel to to, to bow but uh, making it a little heavier uh, is an advantage so uh, what you should do if you have a piece like these were just scrap is roll it on something uh, metal and make sure it's straight before you start so the first thing that you have to do, I've got one made here, is put a, a hole in the end that matches up to a live center on your wood lathe there. And uh, to do that, you need one of these drills, or you should have one of these drills. I use these all the time in my wood turning thing for spindles and that, because you can, it it's made for, uh, the 60 degree live centers and uh, it's actually more used for metal work of course on the metal lathe but I use them in the in the drill all the time and they come in various sizes this one here is a little smaller than the one I showed you but you should have one of those drill bits no matter what anyway so how do you get that hole in the end well I was thinking I did mine on the, my metal lathe but then I thought well why couldn't I use a, a wood chuck 
uh, with a small hole in there. And uh, the various chucks I had, they're made for those round, uh, for those screws that go on there to hold wood. And they didn't come down small enough, but this one with the large jaws did. But you may not have one of these, so I, I like to show things that uh, everybody could do. So that's one, one way you could do that is just uh, put that on your lathe, uh, clamp it down, and uh, use your tailstock uh, with uh, a drill bit in it. And uh, you could do that in the center. So that's fairly easy, so I'm not going to show you that. So uh, what I decided to do is, and I've tested it out on the on one of my on the mandrel I'm going to use today, is I just uh, center punched it and uh, then drilled it with a hand drill, which I'll show you uh, right now. Okay, what I've done is uh, just gr use it on the grinder and shine that end up there a little bit. Put it into a uh, a wood vise there, it'll hold the threads really well. And then just by eye, take a center punch, which you should most likely have, and try to pet, do it as close as possible into the center. Now, that's not right in the center, as you probably can see in that picture, but there's a reason for me doing that. And I'm going to use the uh, drill now here. And if you you start it, and these are made so they start easily in the center on stuff. It's not like a regular drill bit. And then start it, and you'll see, oh, that's way off center. So then you just slant your your drill the direction you want to move it, and uh, then just keep checking it. And uh, pretty soon you'll... Your eye's a pretty good judge of when things are on center. Or you've probably done that. So just keep checking it. And And if you feel that you're off a little bit, just slant your drill a little bit. That looks pretty, that looks pretty good. And uh, bring it up till it's uh, till you got a nice slanted part there. See where am I at here? Okay, there we go. Now it doesn't look like it's in center because, oops, see, on this side you have uh, the thread sticking out. So, but that'll make up for that little bit there. And if you don't get it right the first time, just uh, take and cut a little bit off the end and uh, do it over again. Test it out on your lathe. If you're not satisfied, uh, redo it. It doesn't take very long. Okay, then we'll set the, start setting this up then. Now this can be made, this one's only, this one's only so long. So I can use it for one or maybe I could do two at the same time. This one is the one that I've been using. I'm just using it for one. But I was going to try to set one up for two this time. Okay. Okay, the next step uh, after you have your hole drilled there is to uh, uh, 
take your drill chuck, that's how we're going to drive it, it put this in the tail stock, and uh, then uh, put it, uh, I put a little mark, I put that in the drill chuck, and then I put a little mark on here with a felt pen, then put a nut, a nut on there. Now I used a nylon nut, and then it doesn't move around there, and I spun that in there. Okay, so then that will, you want that to kind of bottom up and give as much uh, grip on, on your mandrel as the other one. Now, if uh, you think you can try it like that, if it works, but I'll show you this right at the, right now, is if you think it's going to uh, slip, because these jaws, you know, you're lathing away, it's not going to take a lot of force to to do your cutting, but if you think it's going to slip uh, later, you can take a, a felt pen and right in the front of each jaw make a pen mark. I don't know if you can see that there or not, but uh, make a pen mark on all three jaws and then you just take it to your grinder or a file and you file a slight flat spot there and uh, then your your chuck will grip that quite easily and uh, you can lay the way really aggressively and, and, it, and it won't slip in your in your in your chuck there okay so that's the basic uh, setup here is just to put a nut on there preferably a nylock and then uh, you're ready to go now the next thing you're going to do is uh, put a spacer in here, a piece of pipe. You could even make one out of a little piece of wood, uh, drill a hole through it, might be better. be nice to find a piece of pipe that's a 3 8 here, but I had a piece that's bigger there, so... But any type of spacer there. And I'm almost thinking... I was going to put two on here, but it's not that long. If you had a little longer one, you could put two or three or, or so on there. I, I don't know if I'd go beyond three, but uh, I'm sure if uh, Cade could do it with a pen mandrel with three on there, you could do it. You could put three on the three-eighths uh, arbor here. So for practical purposes, I think I'm just going to make another one with one on there. Get a little piece of pipe and... Uh, and hacksaw that off, and uh, then we'll start assembling it. Okay, I've cut a little piece of pipe there for a spacer, um, and uh, slipped it on there. Okay, here it is. Here's the piece of pipe. A little piece, you can make those whatever length you need for what piece of metal. And then uh, take another nut, and... Uh, I'm using a drill here, okay? And you got to put that way down there, and uh, you got it all down there. It works really slick. Okay, so we're ready to get our, our wood now. Now, I'm going to make another one similar to this. I don't know if you can see that too well, but I've glued four pieces of wood together. So the, uh, on all four sides, you get that grain pattern there. <coughs> so if you take a piece of wood with a, a slant there, we'll see if we can get uh, where you can see it there, okay? You put all the uh, corners together, so it's like that. Your inner corners all go together. And then you're going to drill a hole through there, right? In the exact center there to do that. Um, I just took a, a piece of uh, wood here. What's it? I have a lot of scrap uh, wood that I pick up from the mill. And if you get a, a wide board, you'll look at the end, especially on the wider ones, 2 by 4 is not a very good idea, but a, a wide board, they'll cut it out of the a slab out and uh, towards the outer edge they're, they're going 45 degrees. You want to get uh, wood with a, a grain of 45 degrees in order to in order to do that. So if you want a two inch uh, uh, globe 
you want to make your uh, your block uh, larger than two inches. This just happened to come out to two and a half. And then uh, I'm going to cut this in half and make two. So you want it longer than the two as well. So I'm going to make this one two and a half. That'll give a quarter inch on each side and you'll see the reason for that uh, a little later. So I'm going to go cut that and then I'll drill a hole in the center there with uh, one of those uh, wood bits with a little center in there. Uh, and I'm, even though I'm using a 3 8 uh, piece of uh, ready rod for the arbor, I'm going to drill uh, the hole one size smaller. And I found that works really well and I'll explain why uh, uh, a little later there. Anyway, I'll go do that so I won't bore you on that project. Trying to keep warm here. Uh, it's minus 24 outside uh, centigrade and my shop was keeping about 10 degrees <laughs> and I'm trying to warm it up to 15 but uh, everything is cold. My hands are freezing and uh, you just have to bear with me there. And I turn the heater off so it doesn't make a racket when I'm recording here. So we'll try to get this done here. My blocks cut, uh, two blocks cut, but I thought I'd just mention something before I drill here. And uh, is that take something that's pointed and uh, while well, you got a little bit of control there, kind of mark the center of those things. And uh, mark both ends, both sides. So you don't have to fish around with the drill trying to get it there. And what you want to do is drill from halfway, sort of halfway from both sides. That way you get it th through the center. You probably drilled things and found when it come out the other side it wasn't in, in the center or whatever you were doing there. So if we drill from both sides and then pop it together on the mound drill it'll come out uh, uh, and spin fairly true rather than it could have a wobble in it. You won't, your end result won't be as quite like you did. So I'll go drill that and then uh, we'll put on. Okay I've got the holes drilled. Now let's just assemble this thing here. And I decided you can do this right on the lathe but I'm, I'm gonna do it right here since I'm all set up with the camera here. So uh, the first ones I did I uh, just hand put them on there because I drilled that one size smaller so it's not gonna slide on there. And the first ones I did, yeah, I drilled at 3 8 but then I come up with this idea, drill it a little bit smaller, then you can thread it on and it uh, won't slip on the mandrel near as easy. And uh, then uh, I came up with this other idea after a few times, and that is to use a washer, the lock washer. And you know what a lock washer is, of course, they've got that spring on there. And uh, that will compress and bite right into the into the wood. That was a phone call there for wanting money for something. Anyway, yeah, I think I get this back here and uh, put a lock washer on here. And the spring on that, when that threads up against that, that'll lock, compress that and lock it right into the wood. It just works like hot damn. Anyway, uh, we'll do this uh, trick here again with the drill. Oops, it makes a fair. There we go. We're up tight. And then all you need is another lock washer on the end there. And a nut. And this fancy idea here, as slick as could be. And I'll lock that lock washer up. There we go. And it's locked up. And uh, then we're ready to start uh, start lathing here. Okay, so that's the, the mandrel set up. Uh, and uh, way, do we, way do we go. <coughs> On the lathe that I have here in the shop, it's a homemade lathe. And I was able to put threads inside the solid, the mandrel. So I just thread that into the mandrel. I don't have a Morris taper in there, but I've got an old lathe uh, in my basement here that I started out with after I retired. 
It was the lathe that was in the school shop when I uh, started teaching there in 1970. So it's got a little bit of history as far as I'm concerned. A little gem, but anyway, it'll work. At least it's got the Morris taper in the headstock and uh, I'll put a chuck in there and we'll lay this down. Well, here's my antique. I guess uh, antique lathe is good for an antique person, but anyway. Uh, yeah, it, when you mount it with the chuck, uh, a regular drill chuck in the uh, headstock here, uh, and being this piece was that long, you got lots of clearance there to use your tools there. It actually makes it uh, quite easily there. Anyway, I'll round this out uh, and then uh, show you a couple things, shape it. I won't uh, do all the lathe work here. No need boring professional turners. Okay, I've rounded it out. Uh, I see a a little place here where the glue was, I got to take it down a little bit more. So you always plan on a two inch, plan on a little bigger size so you make sure you got it just right. Anyway, with these little lock washers on here biting into the wood, uh, you got it works just extremely well. Now you can always mark the, the center and then start lading from each side like you would normally. Now, and uh, I can see it, but I don't think you can. I can see this, the, the round circle starting to form there. Uh, you got metal here and that, so you want to stay away from those. But uh, being that it's a little longer, I'm going to define the ends here. You could measure this or want, but I've made it longer, quarter inch on each side, so just bring this down with it. That will, uh, leaving this space here, gives you, uh, it allows that lock washer to lock into the wood there. And uh, then you can do, we can, your tool is, stays away from their metal there. And, uh, oh, so I'll just go ahead and round this up here and then uh, show, it, show it to you and then follow the next step here. That's important too. Yeah, I've rounded it out to uh, the shape that I desired. You could make a, a template, you know, if you want them perfectly round, but that's uh, really not uh, that important. And uh, I left that little wood over here and, and over there to keep my tools away. And then I wanted a little smaller than this diameter here, so I used a skew chisel uh, upside down to cut in there. I actually went and smoothed this up with the skew chisel. I, uh, Cade demonstrates it uh, very well there, but I didn't want to... Uh, I'm still learning. and it didn't do too bad, but it's, it's quite smooth. So I'll just show you the upside down trick here. I just, this is the first time I did that. Just put your skew chisel upside down, keeping your angle up, and just you know, cut, cut in and cut on that side, and then cut on this side. This side. Okay. 
And now I can uh, just go ahead and sand this here. Uh, and then I'll show you the step just before I take this off. So I'll go ahead and sand this and then I uh, want to show you something else that I come across. Okay, I've sanded it down to uh, how I want it there. So nice and smooth, but uh, now I want to cut these down, these edges down basically right to the arbor there. And uh, I've done it before with the parting tool. I've got a, a little tiny parting tool here that uh, works reasonably well. It's quite thin. It's just a little micro one. And uh, I've nicked the, uh, the metal there a couple times with it. So what I did, I thought, hey, why don't I just take a file I've, this file, you might have a good one, you might have an old one, it really doesn't matter, but you don't use the little tip there, so just file it down, and it's thinner, uh, so it looks like a, a parting tool, and if you ding it, that's okay, it's just a touch on the grinder, and it's good as new again. So, anyway, I'll go ahead and do this one here. Uh, comes right off. Now we just take this off and uh, and we have it all done, the hole in the center, etc. So we just move this here and, uh, and it, being that I didn't use the uh, uh, nylocks, the nut comes off you know quite quickly. It doesn't take you very long to do that at all and then you just spin this off and uh, like I mentioned before I discovered that uh, you just put it in the drill and it, it, it comes off super fast here And then in reverse, and off it comes. And uh, don't lose your lock washer. If you're buying those, buy several more because you'll drop it in the thing there. And uh, that's our, has it all done there. Of course, uh, a lot of you will have reverse on your lathes. It's just a matter of spinning them on and off. You don't have to take it out of the chuck. And uh, there's really no advantage to do multiple ones because you can take them on and off so quickly. So I'm going to, I don't know if we can see this or not here. I'll maybe bring that light down. Uh, It's really hard to see, but I'm going to stain this, and the light wood will pick up the stain, and the dark uh, ring will uh, thing there. And it'll it'll show more of the angle there, the uh, the way it's made there. So anyway, I'll stain that up. You'll probably see it. And the next thing I'm going to do is make the finials. I've got a real super invention uh, for doing the finials there that anybody. Uh, can do. You don't need a special chuck and etc. So you'll want to see that for sure, the one on the finials.